My child arrived just the other day He came to the world in the usual way But there were planes to catch and bills to pay he learned to walk while I was away And he was talking for I knew it And as he grew, he'd say I'm gonna be like you, Dad You know I'm gonna be like you And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon Little boy and the man on the phone When you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when But we'll get together then You know we'll have a good time then strike this is actually a really sad song for me as a father and a parent by I guess worldly standards I was a good dad I was there for Christmas I was there for all the holidays there for the camping trips there for the soccer games but it's still makes me sad because a lot of times I was really not present with my my kids, you know, <laughs> on my phone, chatting it up, going, yeah, 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 blah, 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 mm -hmm, yeah, too preoccupied with the damn Android. You know, people that often, as they get older, they don't regret the errors that they made. They, they regret the missed opportunities and... I can relate to that. So I wanted to talk to you guys about parenting. I raised uh, four stepkids, um, Michelle's four kids, and we had two together. So at one point, there were six kids in the house. Um, my, my boys are 15 and 17 at the moment. So I, I want to talk about parenting, maybe some of the things that I learned, some of the things that I weren't taught, some of the mistakes that I made. And maybe this video for future parents or parents, you know, currently in the thick of things, maybe it can help you. I'm not, uh, I'm not talking or sharing in this video from somebody on a moral high ground or some holy hill. I'm talking actually with a lot of, uh, a lot of humility, a lot of perhaps some vulnerability. So here are th some things that, that I think current parents or future parents or new parents should hear. The first thing is you have a relationship with your children, but you're in a relationship with your girlfriend and hopefully your, your, your husband or your spouse. And that, that's really a subtle difference. Having a relationship and being in a relationship. See, when you're in a relationship, 
that's usually, you know, husband and wife, uh, girlfriend and boyfriend, spouse. You're in a relationship. And when you're in a relationship, you're on equal ground, right? Husband, wife, equal ground. Your spouse, equal ground. But your children, you should not be in a relationship with them because you never at any time want to be on the same level as your children. You want to have a relationship and that that relationship will change and evolve as the child grows up and reaches certain milestones. You see, the problem nowadays is that the psychologists... The current wisdom is saying that we should be in a relationship with our children. And I, I think that's a mistake. When your child is first born and the mother is breastfeeding and taking care of the child's needs, the father should be there as a support. But the primary person when a child is first born is the mother. And the father should be basically a support for the mother. If you're trying to be friends with your child, you're going to fail. A child's brain is developing till they're at least 21 or 24. So you shouldn't be in a friendship with these kind of children. You should be a parent. Friends are on equal grounds. So if you're approaching uh, parenting as trying to be a, a friend with your child, you're on equal ground. You'll find yourself explaining yourself to your children, uh, having conversations and trying to convince them to listen to you. You are in a relationship at that point. You're not having a relationship with them. A parent's relationship is different when they're first born, is different when they're uh, children, is different when they're teenagers, and it's different when they become young adults and then finally an adult. So I'm coming to this having raised my children not as a, a Christian, I've only been three years Christian, but I'll tell you one thing. Your children don't need explanations. When you tell your child two, three, four, five, right up to about 16, don't explain yourself to them. You have given them life. You feed them. You clothe them. You basically fulfill all of their needs. And the least they can do is have faith in their parents, trust in their parents. That's the only thing really a child can give back to a parent is trust. Now, if you raise a child trying to be friends with them, explaining why they should listen to you, then how will this child ever come to God and trust God totally? You see, a relationship with God, yes, through the Holy Spirit, you can have understanding. You can read the Bible and get to know God, get to know what he expects, what he thinks of you. But there is still a large quantity of just shutting your mouth and trusting in the Lord. If you don't have this dynamic with your children early on, then you're teaching them to never trust the Lord. You're, you're not giving them the right frame of reference. If they can't respect their parents, they will not respect the Lord. Maybe through God's grace, through a lot of trial and error and a lot of chastity, a lot of harsh 
experiences and discipline, maybe they'll come to the Lord, but you're not doing your child a favor by trying to be friends with them. If you look at friends, children, my parents once told, told me, yeah, you know what? You'll see when you're an adult, you'll see, you know, the friends that you have that are so important right now, you'll see they'll probably not be there when, you, when you're older. That's quite true, at least in my uh, perspective. Um, sure, there's uh, one or two friends that I might message on Messenger, but those friends that seemed so important to me are not here right now. But my family, which a child, while they're developing, will naturally take advantage of, not appreciate. That's, that's just normal. But the parents will always be there. We're the ones that are always going to be there through thick and thin. So the first lesson, again, not talking as if I'm some enlightened parent teaching anybody. I'm talking through experience and I'm talking through many failures and regrets. Do not be friends with your children. You're so much more. Do not explain yourself to your children. You give them life, shelter, food, and the least they can do to show their love is to trust you. Another word for trust is faith. I know a lot of people like to say, oh, faith it, it, for some reason, they attach faith with uh, blind faith, and that's really not true. Faith is just another word for trust. Now, the best thing that you can do for your children is to raise them as Christian with the Bible, because the Bible has a lot of wisdom for parents and a lot of wisdom for children. So don't be friends with your children. You are so much more. Also, do not let your children close to the computer. Don't let them on social media. Don't let them on YouTube. Do not do this. This is a cesspool of darkness social media youtube um twitter instagram this stuff corrupts adults okay it is a cesspool the bible says what you allow to enter the gates of your eyes will influence your heart for parents twitter Instagram, YouTube, it's just as destructive. It pulls your attention away from your children, from your wives, from your family. It is made to be addictive. And I'm very guilty of spending a lot of time just wasting my time with stupid games, with stupid social media, talking to my kids while I'm texting. See, kids can tell when a parent is present. Kids can tell when a parent is present. So don't think that just because you're sitting in the room with them on your phone, kind of responding to them, that they don't feel that. That is not that is not the appropriate and that is not the real attention that children need and crave and need for their own development. They can tell when you're not present. And nowadays, look at what society has created. They've created a society where both parents need to work to be able to pay, pay the bills, basically. So they've got, they've got us in that way. 
No longer does a mother stay at home to do the most important job possible to nurture and be present with their child in their most important developmental years. Our children are shipped off to daycares. They spend most of their time with teachers. Most of the time they're at school. And then after they arrive, after whether they're daycare, and then after that just gets shipped off into school, and then parents um, are not present for their children. They're on, they're on their own social media, not realizing how addictive it is. They're throwing children in front of TVs. And at least back in the days when I was a kid, TVs at least were teaching ethics and morals. My, an example, uh, Pinocchio, you know, Pinocchio, who isn't a real boy, uh, but wants to be a real boy. And uh, he has his little conscience, that grasshopper, is it Jiminy Cricket, I think? Anyways, uh, speaking in his ear, but his conscience itself uh, was far from wise. And that, that's what happened. We all have conscience but we're also immature and our conscience grows and develops as we grow and develop. The sad truth is sometimes by the time you reach an adult, you've been so corrupted that your conscience was better when you were a five-year-old than it is now. But the story of Pinocchio is that they go to this fun land and they do whatever they want. They drink beer, they smoke cigars, they bust stuff. And all of a sudden, they start turning into asses, donkeys. And then the gates close. And they become prisoners. They did what they want. And now they're imprisoned. That's the story of a hedonistic life, not wanting to follow. Um, okay. I'll just press pause for a second. Family's arriving. Yeah, for sure. I'll be out tomorrow and I'll do that. Okay, sorry about that. I told my wife, I'm like, I'm doing a video. She was going to pick up the kids. I'm like, come in, no problem. Just try to be quiet. I just want to do this video. And uh, she forgot. So I actually don't remember where I was because I didn't really plan any structured way of talking. I'm just, just sharing stuff. Um, so, okay. Do not explain yourself to a young child. Their brain is still developing and you offered them life, shelter, security, food, everything possible. So they do not need to have things explained. Now, if you teach the Bible, which actually will teach your child how to be submissive to God, will teach them a blueprint of life then you won't have to explain yourself so much to your children. So a child is supposed to, this is the only thing a child can offer. You give your child everything, all that they can show, all that they can offer to show you love is obedience. Now, as you read the Bible with your child, um, you know, obviously there, there's children Bibles and stuff like that that teach, you know, um, the, the core values um, and things can, you know, you can evolve into actually reading the Bible. And then after it's not you telling your kids what to say and do, it's basically God. And you as a parent are following those rules and the child will learn those rules. And then you could say, it's not my rules, it's God's rule, right? Um, the other thing is keep, Children away from the cesspool of social media, keep them away from it. And you keep yourself away from it as much as possible. Um, because it's very addictive and it will pull you away from the attention you should be giving your spouse also each other and your children. 
So what I was talking about previously was um, some of the older Disney videos, some of the older cartoons, most of them tended to teach values to children. Now, Disney has gone completely woke. Uh, they're, they're activists, it's politicized. Uh, I see uh, cartoons where children are not listening to their parents. Um, Caillou never listening to his parents, always doing something else. Oh, Caillou. No, you have to be very careful. So even most of the cartoons and childhood entertainment have some kind of agenda behind them. And uh, you have to really, really be careful. So those are two things that you should um, implement uh, or you should be aware of not, of not doing with your children. Be present with your children so that when you listen to the song, Cats in the Cradle and the Silver Spoon, Little Boy Blue and the Man in the Moon, when you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when, you know, it's, it's a very sad song about a father always promising the son that they're going to have a good time eventually, but he's just too busy. And before you know it, he's older and his son's exactly like him. It's a very sad story. Don't put yourself in a situation where that song makes you want to cry. It means you went wrong somewhere. The other parental wisdom is never, ever disagree in front of your children with your wife. Never. If you don't agree, you can talk about it later but never show a divided front in front of your children. And this becomes more and more important as they grow up. Children are very, very keen at sensing any weakness, any crack in the chain, and they will exploit it. Once you do it, it becomes a habit. Never raise your voice to each other in front of your children. Never raise your voice if you can when your children aren't there. Never raise your voice to your children. Now, if you do it right straight from when they're the youngest of age, you probably won't have to raise your voice. You tell your child once what to do. If the child does not do it, you calmly put them in their room. You ask a child, clean, and I mean, obviously this goes with age, right? Like it, I'm talking about once that child goes, mine, my, my, around like two and a half, three, once their sense of self developed, boom, there's a serpent. There's, there, there is the sin nature already. All of a sudden they have a sense of who they are and everything's about me, myself and I. Okay, it is part of the fallen nature that is the fall of man. Children, okay, we like to say, oh, they're so, no, they're not. Children are bad. They're bad and evil, okay? <laughs> they are ruthless. They look innocent, but every child that is not disciplined will turn into a terror. Jordan Peterson uh, has a funny way of saying, don't let your child ever do something that will make you not like them. Don't give, don't give an inch. Don't explain yourself to a young child. Always have a unified front with both parents. If you do this at a young age, there's actually gonna be no need to ever raise your voice. And then at the same time, you're teaching them biblical truths. You're teaching them morals and, and wisdom from the Bible, from the word of God. So you won't have to explain why you're doing things because the child will actually get it. Now, if you're not teaching the word of God to your children, See, I, I've only been a Christian for three years. My wife has always been a Christian. 
And when you look at her behavior, she preached through her behavior. She's a quiet lady. Um, we never really read the Bible uh, as a family. And I, was, I wasn't a Christian. So when I started to try and implement um, Christian values to my, uh, especially my oldest, I was playing catch up and it was too late. You know, discipline your children. Um, I think, look, when I was a kid and uh, I had a few, I had a few whacks on the butt, didn't hurt. It was more insulting to my ego than anything. Uh, nowadays, parents are in a situation where the children have the upper hand. The children can literally threaten the parents. Say, I'm going to go tell the teacher you beat me up. Parents used to have the authority to give a little smack on the butt once in a while. But now we don't have that. So we have raised a bunch of kings and queens that rule our houses, that have the parents by the you know what through threats because of society and government and school overreaching. So now a child can just threat, threaten. And as they get, become teenagers, they, they'll be like, what are you gonna do? Well, there's things that, that you can do. I'm not gonna get too much into issues that I've had with my oldest because that's not fair to him. Um, but my youngest, I'll just say my youngest uh, had ADHD, truly ADHD, wasn't just uh, full of energy, uh, learning disabilities, a lot of behavioral issues, and he got disciplined daily. And now he's 15 years old and he's humble and he takes discipline and he's not rebellious. What I'll say about my oldest is that he was a really, really good boy and he hardly needed discipline. Uh, the rare times I had to discipline, he went to his room and he didn't say a thing. But in his teen years, he's changed and become, let's say, very, very rebellious and I sometimes wonder, like, was I harder on one of them than the other? I don't know. All I know is that if you're trying to start implementing Christian values to a 15-year-old, it's way harder. You got to implement this young. And that's what the Bible says. Raise your children up in the word of God so that when they're older, they'll be able to follow that path. Look at children, okay? Children believe in the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, and Santa Claus, okay? So first of all, that shows you they shouldn't be making major decisions about what their identity is or um, having debates with their parents. They believe in a fat man that flies around the world that within not even 24 hours, because he has to do this at night, within eight to 12 hours has to deliver gifts everywhere with a reindeer that has a shiny nose. And there's tiny elves that build these toys for the children, even though the children walk around Walmart and see those toys made by companies. So why are you debating with these children? Okay, their brain are not developed. In fact, children from their youth right up to probably mid twenties are in what I would call a transitional psychosis. They don't make sense. So why are you debating with children? Why are you trying to convince them? If you are constantly raising your voice to the children, if you constantly yell, they become desensitized to it. And then you are constantly yelling and it doesn't phase them. So what are you going to do? You're going to have to up, up the ante, start like smashing things or something. When a parent screams at a child and they start realizing this, the older they get, 
it's a clear sign. You are telling your child, I have no clue what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing and I'm resorting to screaming. So parents have to stick together. Parents have to have a game plan. Parents have to show a common front. You have to show your child also attention. Look, when you're, when you're praying to God, when you're seeking out the Lord, right? You want to feel God through the Holy Spirit inside your heart and mind. You want to know that he's there. So lots of Christians are praying, looking for that connection with God, but yet they don't realize that they're not even offering that to their children. Society at the moment is degenerate. It's becoming more and more degenerate. Pornography is rampant. All the child has to do is write Pornhub. There's no code. You don't need a visa. Children are watching pornography at younger and younger ages. Husband and wives are looking at pornography. Men are, are look, porno pornography changes your brain, even for adults. You have husbands that watch pornography excessive that develop impotency. Pornography is like a drug. It creates a dopamine release where you need more and more extreme forms of it to get the same dopamine release. And then when you come to make love with your wife or and not just husband, this is just as bad with, with uh, girls, uh, with women. Um, men become imp impotent. They, they are not attracted to the, just the natural love making that a husband and wife should do now you could imagine nowadays children eight nine ten year, years old where their brain is still developing up to 21 forming these networks these you know because they call the brain neuroplasticity you know forming these pathways as they are developing their sexuality you think that it screws up adults which is a known fact Imagine what it's doing to these children. Imagine what girls are doing, girls that aren't getting, uh, either don't have a father in their household, uh, don't have the attention of their father, that are watching this and saying, well, I want boys to like me. So they're acting basically like horse. Um, the uh, that video with Cardi B, a WAP, wet ass kitty, P-U-S-S-Y, disgusting. And I remember at work saying, um, yeah, she's acting like a whore. And uh, the girl said, oh, excuse me? They said, oh, so it's okay if boys, if guys do it, but now the girls are doing it, now they're whores? No, actually, when guys are doing it, they're perverts and pigs. So what's being taught now, uh, the new feminine feminine movement is that acting like a whore, revealing your breasts, shaking that booty is empowerment. This is what I've been told. Somebody asked me, uh, like I, I said, listen, man, I've done, uh, I've done this drug uh, when I was young. Um, and now I'm telling you, even though I've done it in the past, I'm telling you from my experience, that's horrible. So even if I did do these things that now I'm saying are inappropriate, it just means that I was stupid back then and now I know better. And now I'm trying to let you know, don't go down that road. You don't have to learn lessons through acting uh, stupid. There's also the, um, see, I believe in intelligent design. I believe that we're made in the image of God. I believe that we are uh, different from animals. We have eternity in our heart. Um, but children are being taught about evolution, that um, nothing created everything, that um, everything is just blind chance, um, and, and that really there's no meaning to life, that we have to find our own meaning to life. So if we're telling our youth that there is no difference between us and animals, why are 
we surprise that people now are acting like animals. We have our base desires. We have lust. We are fallen. And this is a natural state of being at the moment in our fallen state. And the only thing that can bring us out of that is basically God. And not only just a belief in a philosophy, a belief in some form of God, that might help intellectually, um, but through Christianity, through the power of the Holy Spirit, once you go through the Son, the Word of God, true transformation can occur. See, I used to, uh, I've always believed in God, and um, I said to myself, wow, I can still have fun, I can still get drunk with my friends, to, you know, still party, um, and still be a good person. To a certain extent, that was true. But eventually it catches up with you, and um, a hedonistic lifestyle, a worldly lifestyle, a lifestyle running after our lusts does degrade our soul. And I've definitely experienced that darkness. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a saying, uh, a verse in the Bible that says, uh, when the eye is filled with light, the whole body is filled with light. But when the eye is darkened, how great is that darkness? And um, the Bible says that we are the temples of God. And um, I, I believe if, even before becoming Christian, uh, the, that the Holy Spirit was still having an influence on me, was still there. But it wasn't until I went through the sun, Christ Jesus, that I was given the Holy Spirit and true transformation occurred. Now, I wish that my transformation was like Hollywood or something. Um, and, and I had this radical transformation and I was no, I was like a saint. And that's, that's far from true. But the earthly pleasures that I used to justify and get quite a lot of satisfaction from were left a bitter taste in my mouth. Um, and that's how the Holy Spirit works. Often people think like, oh, if you become a Christian, you have to listen to, uh, to the Bible and uh, you're going to get punished if you don't. No. That's not what the gospel says. The gospel says that the Holy Spirit will come and sanctify you throughout your lifetime. The more you read the Bible, the more you pray, the more you surround yourself in church with like-minded people, this all has an influence of sanctifying yourself. I tried to have this world and the, the other world, and you can't. You just, you can't have it. So raising up your children with God from the youngest stages of their life, especially, look, especially when they're, they'll believe in Santa Claus and the truth fairy. You know what? So you may as well brain, brainwash them with the truth that there is a God, a father in heaven, and he has sent from his being, from his heart, the word of God that became flesh. So, and the Holy Spirit that descended upon this son of God so that we could know the invisible and ancient of days. So that when we look upon Christ, we can say that we have seen the father. Let me check some, some of these uh, Bible verses about parenting out. Um, hmm. not sure where that is. Screen. Just give me a second. Ah, that. Mm -hmm. Share screen. All right. Let's look at some verses. 
Father, do not, fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. So you're supposed to raise up your children at the youngest age with the word of God so that the son and the father or the mother and the son, the family is following a blueprint or instruction manual of life that we can always point and say, you know what? It's not me. This is what God says. If you're trying to be friends with your children, they will reach their either the terrible twos or they'll challenge you all throughout the, their, their childhood or they'll become adults, uh, not adults, teenagers, young adults, and they will rebel. And you, if you don't have the word of God because you don't believe in God, uh, then you're just going to yell and um, they'll get discouraged and they'll rebel. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training instruction of the Lord. See, this is where I'm playing catch up because um, I followed every other path. Always believed in God. Um, didn't follow Christianity. Read a lot about Christianity. Had issues with a lot of things. Tr the Trinity wasn't explained uh, correctly. Um, so I shied away from Christianity, but I, I did every other path of Buddhism, Krishnamurti, Eckhart Tolle, uh, the Tao Te Ching, Kabbalah, every single possible teaching that I could. Uh, I, I remember I had, I had a whole wall, just all sorts of spiritual books. I used to tell Michelle, who, who, was, who, who is a Christian, uh, probably since she was six or something, and um, I remember, I remember, you know, while I was on my spiritual search going, wow, she's like a female Jesus. I mean, she really walked the walk. She wasn't much of a talker and, and she she preached through her actions, but we never sat down and read the Bible. And I guess that's where I failed. Um, but anyways, I used to tell Michelle, Look, you know, I have a whole book, a whole wall of spiritual teachings. I said to Michelle, I said, there's nothing, there's nothing more painful to me than believing in these virtues and knowing that I'm lacking all of them. Oh, I pulled off a good mask. I knew there was some spiritual sickness in me. I knew that, that there was something not right inside. And what I did was, um, I at least acknowledge it. I acknowledged my darkness and I knew it wasn't right. So uh, when I'd go out into public, I'd put on a mask. And um, obviously what I was projecting outwardly and what was really inside me, uh, there was a really big difference. In a way I was living a lie uh, at least I, at least I didn't justify it. And, and I, I acted pretty, I pulled it off pretty well. And, um, but my hedonistic lifestyle caught up with me and eventually, um, it did degrade me and thank goodness, uh, a lot of it was alcoholism and stuff like that. Thank goodness that I, I got through that. And, um, people, when they criticized me, it would cut like a knife. And uh, when I became sober, when I became a Christian and my conscience was no longer condemning myself, then I didn't really care as much what people thought of me because my conscience wasn't killing me. So if you are extra sensitive and you care too much what people think of you and you're destroyed when people say things about you, chances are you're living a lie. Because when your conscience, when, when what you're expressing to the world outside and what is really inside of you become more and more close, then you will care less and less what people think. But if you're living a lie and you're predict, you're, you're projecting uh, a mask then that bubble can easily be popped and you are going to be at the mercy of every single person.
Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land and the Lord your God uh, uh, may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. If a child cannot honor their mother and father, how can they honor the living God? No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained in it. This is your parental duty, okay? Discipline your children. You cannot properly discipline your children if you are playing friends with them, okay? Um, we're raising a generation of children that can't accept discipline from their parents, uh, forget about trying to submit themselves to God Almighty. They're a bunch of snowflakes that are self-centered narcissists that are rebellious and all of society seems right now because they have walked away from the living God. God has left our society, especially the West, to our own devices, to our own base desires. And atheists think that atheism is not a religion, but they believe it. It is a religion. Humans, man, are religious animals. We are created in the image of God. We have eternity written on our hearts. And we are made to worship something. It might be the devil or it might be the Lord, but I'm telling you, you got to worship something. Whether it's the true God or a God of your own making, made in your own image, you will worship something. Whether it's your beauty, beauty, your money, whether you worship power or material gain, there, you have no choice but to worship something. And if you don't worship God that, that, that leads to eternal life, and not only a God, but the God, Yahweh and his son, because if you don't go through the son, you will not get to the father. It was only when I fell to the ground, having spoken with God all my life, having seen God work in my, in my life, and said, you know, God, I said, things are just not working. I am broken. I am exhausted. I... I Forget your standards. I'm ashamed by my own flawed standards. And I said, I don't feel comfortable with going through Jesus. It feels like I'm blaspheming. It feels like, like I, I am worshiping another God. But I am so darn tired. I am so desperate and fatigued that I am willing to try. And I poured my heart out and said how. I wasn't living up to my own standard as a father, as a spouse, as everything. And it's when I said that, that the Holy Spirit entered me. The spirit of truth and understanding. Once I went through the Son to get to the Father, the Holy Spirit came and testified that the Father and Son are the real deal. That's why it says it's a spirit of truth and understanding. It, it, it is the witness that, that lets you know. It is the spirit of God. And it even says um, that only the spirit of a person knows the mind of that person. Therefore, when you have the spirit of God, you have truth and understanding. You can have, you can have the written word. You can hear about Jesus. 
there is no way that you can know whether this is just a story until you have faith as big as as small as a mustard seed. But if your faith is just that, just that amount, and you're open enough, and you're desperate enough, you're tired, you've been beaten down by your own stupidity and life and the stupidity of others. You just need a faith as small as a mustard seed. And the Holy Spirit testifies to me now. And I can't, it's like, I've said it before, it's as real as the wood right here that I'm knocking on. But you, no one gets to the Father but through me. Now, I know a lot of people that are Christian that are wonderful people. They're even I'd even go as far as to say they're spiritual. You see, God's Holy Spirit, God says he rains down on the flowers as, long, as well as the weeds. God rains down and sustains and, and even sends love to sinners as well as sinners that accept Christ, believers, in this, in this lifetime. So I believe that even though I was not a Christian, I felt God's spirit controlling me and, and working in my life. For Christians, we are the temple of God, not just Christians. Human beings made in the image of God, we are destined. What we're supposed to function as is temples where the Holy Spirit resides. And then I noticed that, yeah, God was loving me. God, uh, while I believed in a God, was working in my life, but he was around the temple and not in it. And the spirit, the Holy Spirit of truth and understanding is the only witness that can testify the truth of the Father and of the Son. But the problem is you can't get that testimony unless you have faith in the son. So all of this stuff in the Bible, the people, you believe in that? No, I don't believe in it. I experienced it. It's real. Like the whole thing is real. Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Whoever spares the rod, the rod is a symbol of discipline. So if you spare discipline in your children, if you just try and shut them up, oh, stop crying, stop, okay, 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 daddy. If if you say one thing and you don't, and, and, and you pussyfoot around it and you say, if you do this, I'm gonna, this is gonna happen. And then they do it and you're like, and okay, you're sparing the rod. If you're trying to be friends with your children, friends have no right disciplining each other. So if you put yourself in the friend position, you have no right disciplining your children. You're not friends, you're parents. And you've been given a God-given duty to raise them up in the Lord. Psychology, society, the education system have all failed us. It is all garbage. Okay. Right now, if I had a, a little child, we would be homeschooling. It is ridiculous, the garbage that they're teaching. And not only that, the teachers think that they have a right, okay, over what the parents believe. Okay, they are teaching your children behind your back garbage. It's like the teachers think that they have to protect the children from their own parents. Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. I was a friend to my chil children and when one of my boys at 15 started rebelling and going off the deep end, um, even though I had just become a fresh uh, Christian, it was too late because I didn't start off uh, my child uh, on the way to go. You know what? Because I was, uh, I didn't even know what, where 
what the path was. I was lost. I was hedonistic. I, I was suppressing my base desires with no ability to transform them. I was projecting what I know I should be, but I was not. A rod and a reprimand imparts wisdom, but a child left on discipline disgrace, disgraces its mother. Look at the children. Look how disobedient they are. Okay, I I know I know um, I know a grandparent that that was punched in their face by their grandson, and the grandparent talked to their child. And he took the child's side. Um, I, I've seen horrible behavior by children, aggressive behavior, mad children, angry children, extra sensitive children. This is is and this is pandemic. And this is because society, this age in large, has rejected the true God. Discipline your children, and they will give you peace. They will bring you the bring you the delight you desire. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not con we are not consumed, for His compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Not sure about uh, here. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And that's really what I'm holding on now. As a parent right now, having a lot of trouble with one of my uh, sons, uh, and I love him so much. And it breaks my heart. The one job as a parent is to bring your children to God, Yahweh, the one true God, the God taught about in Christianity. And that God is achieved through his son, the eternal son. That is the word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us that died for our sins and was resurrected and presented his body as a living sacrifice to his father so that we all who believe may achieve oneness with the father and son through the Holy Spirit, that when judgment day comes, though we are guilty for sinning against God, we are clothed with Christ and we are righteous through faith in the son. Um, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God. And that's the only thing I have right now when it comes to my son is praying because I'm anxious about him and I'm worried about him. And I know he's he's going down the wrong path. And all I can do now is pray and, and request that God leads him down the right way. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland of grace on your head and a chain to adorn your neck. This has to be done at the very youngest age because Every single thing from society to education to what the child is hearing on the internet from the friends that they are hanging around with, it is all opposite to what God intended. And it's all bringing them to rebellion against God, to darkness and to destruction. And if it's only from the grace of God that some people will be saved, thank goodness for that. 
Be shepherds of God's flock that are under your care, watching over them, not because they you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing, pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And I think that's where a, a lot of parents, uh, me included, to look, I, I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not a horrible person. I am looking through the lens of God and uh, I fall well short compared to the majority of parents. I'm a great dad compared to God. Seriously lacking. We're supposed to be shepherds of God's flock. We're supposed to shepherd our children. We're not supposed to be on our phones, playing stupid games, texting. We're not supposed to be shoving them in front of television. So we're too preoccupied when, with other things. We should have a good balance between our, our career and our children. So we should be shepherds of God's flock because I tell you who's shepherding the children now. They're wolves. They're ungodly teachers, ungodly daycare workers that are whispering in your children's ears things that will lead them astray. You don't know what your teacher it, it, you don't know the heart of your teacher. You don't know where their heart and where their mind is. You don't know if they're ungodly. You don't know if they're delusional. You don't know if the daycare lady is, is a sick, crazy person. Looking at society at the moment, seriously, homeschool your children. Please homeschool your children now. Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is true. It is so true. Until I went through the sun, I did not have the Holy Spirit. It, the Bible, there was no way of knowing if it was true or false. It was just literature. I wondered and I doubted. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and then, and only then, will you receive the Holy Spirit. That is a, is a teacher. It is a spirit of truth and understanding. It is a witness. And until you get that, there's no, no way of knowing if this is, is hogwash or not. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Children are a heritage for the Lord, offspring a reward for him, uh, from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man who quivers, uh, whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, I'm convinced, because you know those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. This is where the West has abandoned God, and we have been left to our own fallen hearts, and the degeneration that I'm seeing in society sickens me. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home. 
And when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you wake up, how can you do that if you're on your phone? Tie them as a symbol on your hand and bind them on your forehead. Write them down, write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. You got to start right from the beginning, right from the cradle, from the cradle to the moment they walk out. The word of God transforms. Bring them to the cross of, the, of God's son. And then you won't have to worry about them because the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God and Christ Jesus living in, in them, in them, will guide them. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. And there's plenty of other endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children for what children are not disciplined by their father. If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more would, should we submit to the father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems unple no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained in it. As a child grows up in their by the time they're even 10, if you've really, uh, look, by the time they're 10, they've already gone through the Bible. If you're reading the Bible every day, uh, a chapter or two, they've gone through the Bible multiple times. By the time they're teenagers, they should have that written on their heart and mind. Okay. Therefore, um, you don't have to explain yourself to a child raised with the word because the word has been ingrained on their, their heart and mind. They have the Holy Spirit. So you, there's no debating. But if you don't have that, that child, okay, will question you all throughout their childhood, which is horrible for their soul. And then they will rebel as, as young adults. And then sometimes even as adults, then you don't have friends. Jesus is a perfect, um, perfect example of parenthood. He first came as a servant. That's what parents do. They don't discipline babies. They serve them. They wipe their poopy. They feed them. Every single thing is serving the child. Then Jesus, okay, comes as a king. You are to obey and not question him. And then when we're resurrected, Jesus says, I call you brother and sister. Then you can be friends with your children. You're a servant when they're babies. They are supposed to never question your authority. They are supposed to figure out why you're doing stuff through the word of God. If you are reading the word of God with your children, the Holy Spirit will in be infused into them. And you won't have to explain it. You'll raise them up in righteousness. You will discipline them with the rod and authority of the Holy Scriptures. And then when they're adults, they won't bring shame and hardship to themselves as well as you. Bible verse. I just want to finish with this Bible verse of the end times. 
Mm. Ah, somewhere here, but no. Bear with me, guys. Um, it, it's really worth it. I want in. In the last days, children will be disobedient. Uh, uh, holy. Uh, yeah. Get this out of the way. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, pride, uh, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful and unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, having no, have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible blah, blah, blah. The whole point is, look at society. This is society right now. And let me let, let me show you uh, what's acceptable for teachers nowadays. Um, this is in Canada. Uh, okay, so here you go. So this is a teacher that is allowed to wear this. This is in a Canadian school. And uh, this teacher is wearing this in front of students and even though the te uh, a lot of parents and students are outraged, the school is defending this teacher. Is this appropriate? Is it? So I highly suggest that you, uh, you start homeschooling your children. Because this uh, disgusting, degenerate behavior that is now acceptable in front of uh, in front of children is becoming mainstream. Almost done. I like to finish. I think I'm going to do this from now on when I'm doing a. Video, Christian video, sinners, prayer. Now, there's no there's no official uh, prayer to accept Christ. Uh, you can just speak from your heart. Just admit your sins. Admit that you're, you know, exhausted with, with trying and, and that you need a savior. Just speak from your heart. That's all you got to do. But for those who perhaps don't even know how to start there. Um, I'm going to just read the sinner's prayer. Let's 
Sorry. There's one. Yeah, this is a good one. Let's read this one. But I, I kind of wanted to put it up on uh, put it up on the screen. Here, okay. Images. We're gonna read this one. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer asking for the forgiveness of my sins. I can I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross at Calvary, that I might be forgiven and have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead, and I ask you right now to come into my life and be my personal Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and will worship you all the days of my life because your word is truth. I confess with my mouth that I am born again and cleansed by the blood of Jesus in Jesus name. Amen. Or you could do like I did said, God, I have a big issue with this whole Jesus thing, but I'm so desperate and fed up with myself that I am willing to try it. You could do it that way. And then you just pour your heart out. And let's finish with uh, this sad reminder to parents. Don't make this song your sad song. <laughs> It came from college just the other day So much like a man I just had to say Son, I'm proud of you Didn't you sit for a while? He shook his head and he said with a smile What I'd really like, Dad, is the bar of the car keys See you later, get the hand